Okay, stay there. Don't move. Give me a smile. I want to get you at a good angle. Hey, would you stand still? Do I look pretty? You're fine, but I still don't like the angle. Hmm. No, wait. I've got a better idea. Why don't you sit down, okay? I feel like a movie star. Yes, that's much better. Keep smiling, Kim. Great. Ready? Fabulous. <laughs> They're gonna be great photos. Oh, be careful! Whoa. I'm falling! Watch out for the camera! Oh. Are you all right, Alex? I'm sure glad the camera didn't get wet. I'll get these developed tomorrow. Oh, I hope they come out well, don't you? They'll be perfect. I'm a great photographer. Oh, the camera does all the work. All you have to do is snap the shutter, right? Yes, at the right moment. <laughs> camera actually takes pictures. I can tell you that. The camera takes in light and puts it on the film, understand? But how does my image get on the film? Oh, well, you see, uh... Why don't we ask Jeannie? Mm-hmm. Jeannie in a photo? Here I am again, your old friend Jeannie! Whee! Oh, Jeannie! Kids, I hear you'd like to know how photos are made. Well, let me tell you the history of photography. Let's go! Wow. To take pictures, you've got to have a camera. And of course, film. Without film, no camera can take pictures. Everyone knows that. But do you know which came first? Huh? That's right, the camera was invented long before film. We're now in Europe in the 17th century. This box may look like a camera, but it isn't really. It's got a lens like a camera, but it was actually used by artists to help them with their sketches. Hi, how are you? But, but who in the world are you? I'm Jeannie, a photographer. He doesn't know what photography is because it hasn't been invented yet. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but could you tell me how that thing works? Yes, of course. It's a camera obscura, and it projects an image on a paper so that I can copy it. But where does the name camera obscura come from? Oh, the name comes from two Latin words, you see. Obscura means dark, and camera means room. In a dark room, there's a little hole on one of the walls. Light rays come through the hole, forming an image on the opposite wall. But the image is upside down. Instead of a simple hole, my camera obscura has a convex lens as well as a tilted mirror which makes the picture right side up. Mm-hmm. The image appears on this frosted glass. I see, with color and detail. And so I can make an exact copy by drawing the image projected on the glass. Fantastic! Wouldn't it be better still if the scene on the glass became a picture with colors and all? Sure, it would be better, but it's impossible. I'm a good artist, but I'm not a magician. <laughs> he was so close to becoming a photographer, if he'd only known. Today's cameras are based on the same principle as the camera obscura, but they've become smaller, easier to handle, and more perfected. Hocus Pocus Dominocus! Hocus Pocus Dominocus! It didn't work. Another failure. For a moment, I thought I'd succeeded in creating gold, but no. Uh, oh. <laughs> this man is an alchemist. He's trying to make gold. He thinks he can do it with magic words. We know it's impossible, but don't tell him that. <laughs> in the 17th century, people thought chemistry and magic were the same. Are you laughing at me? No, I wouldn't dare do that. Not me. Alchemists never succeeded in creating gold, but during their experiments, they did make certain chemicals react on metal. That was how silver nitrate and silver chloride were discovered. These silver compounds must have seemed magical, because when exposed to light, this very white mixture became very, very black. 
Have you noticed that this silver compound turns black when exposed to the light, Mr. Alchemist? Why doesn't it turn into gold? What's so special about it turning black? Believe it or not, it can be very useful. Really? Of what possible use can such a thing be? I want to produce gold. And you've come here simply to make fun of my experiments. Ah! Everyone laughs at me, but one day I'll discover the magic formula for making gold. You hear? <sighs> Incredible. All he cares about is producing gold. The fact that silver compounds turn black when exposed to light didn't interest anyone. They were so obsessed with making gold that nothing else mattered. Look at this. Today we use silver compounds to coat film, which is why it turns black when it's exposed to light. It's photosensitive. That means anything that's sensitive to light. It was right in front of him. I tried to tell him, but he wouldn't listen. And to think I could have been a photographer. In 1727, real experiments were performed with silver compounds by a German named Johann Heinrich Schulze. Oh, that should do it. <laughs> now this I really want to see. Hey, Mr. Schulze, what's underneath? Wait just a second and I'll be happy to show you. Huh? What is it? You see, in this bottle filled with a silver compound solution, I added some chalk powder. Ah. It's an experiment in photosensitivity. And now, I'm going to put the jar on the windowsill where it is exposed to light. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's turning black as usual. Yeah, but only the parts I cut out were able to be exposed to the light. Take off the paper, you'll see. Okay. You're right! The image is perfect! That's wonderful! The parts covered by the black paper were not exposed to light and thus remained white. What's wrong now? It's all turning black! The sun is fading the image, Mr. Schulze! That is the problem. As soon as we remove the paper, it all becomes exposed. So the image is only temporary then. Can't you invent a way to preserve the image, Mr. Schulze? I'm afraid not. I don't know how. What Schulze couldn't invent was invented later. It's called a fixing solution. In the 19th century, an Englishman, Thomas Wedgwood, continued Schulze's work. He coated sheets of white paper with a silver compound. Instead of paper cutouts, he used flowers and leaves to cover the light. But he didn't manage to make them permanent either. Of course, one way of not destroying the images was to keep them hidden from the light. But in that case, no one could ever look at them, which is kind of silly. Someone had to come up with the idea of combining the advantages of the camera obscura and silver compounds. And this someone was a Frenchman by the name of Nisiphor Nieps. He used the camera obscura to produce a photograph on a sheet of paper coated with silver compound. This experiment took place in 1816. That should be long enough. Oh, not again. Why does the image always come out in reverse? That's easy. It's a negative. What in the world is a negative? It's a photo. A photo? What's that? A photograph, an image made with a camera. I succeeded in getting an image, but look, the sky is black. And everything that should be black is white. Everything is the reverse of reality. The images I get are all wrong. And then, when the light hits them, look at what happens. Oh. It all turns black. I could have told him that. Hmm. There must be a way of obtaining an image that reflects reality. To achieve this goal, he gave up on silver compound and experimented with other products. What's that, Mr. Nieps? I'm covering this metal plate with a solution consisting of tar and gasoline. And when I expose it to the light, it becomes hard. This experiment took place in 1826. How much longer, Mr. Nieps? We've been waiting more than eight hours. I think that's enough exposure. Oh, no! It's overexposed! No! Now comes the most important part of the process. I rinse the plate in a dissolvent. The unexposed parts, which are less hard, are dissolved. Only the hardest parts stick to the plate. 
But look, the light and dark parts are still reversed. The light parts are the metal no longer covered with the solution. Now, when I put the plate in acid, the metal becomes black. Look what happens when I remove the remaining solution. There you are. You did it! Hooray! The first photograph. The light and dark parts are true to life and the photo is permanent. This is the window from which Nieps took the photo. He called the picture View from a Window in saint Louis de Varennes. It was the first scenic photo we know of. Nieps called his process heliography, which was the beginning of photo engraving. Congratulations, Mr. Nieps! Merci beaucoup. Now, if you like, I'll take your photo, Jeannie. Would you mind not moving for eight hours? What? Me pose for eight hours? Thanks, but no thanks. We are now in the laboratory of the Frenchman Louis Daguerre, who is inspired by Nieppe's work. Daguerre tried to obtain images on silvered copper plates, which he coated with a thin layer of iodine. He was hoping to improve Nieps's invention, heliography. He doesn't look too busy now. Let's go and talk to him. Mr. Daguerre, can I talk to you for a while? How's your new experiment going? Oh, not too bad. Taking a heliograph is a very long process. I found that iodine and silver are much more sensitive to light. I coated the silver plate with iodine. Ah! I won't have to pose as long. It'll take much less time. Mm. The plate is ready. Would you like me to take your photo? You're kidding! I'd love to be your model! Okay, I'm ready, Mr. Daguerre. It won't take more than three hours. What? Three whole hours? Yes, and you must not move. You've got to stay perfectly oh, still, you oh, hear? Oh, oh. You mustn't move at all while the shutter is open. No, 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 don't move, I said. Ooh, he's awfully stubborn. Did it come out well? Can I see it? There is nothing to see. There obviously wasn't enough light. No! What could have possibly gone wrong? I must think this out. The following day, Daguerre had a big surprise. It is perfect. I don't understand. But yesterday, there was absolutely nothing. There has got to be a reason. Maybe it's magic. Absurd. It could be a chemical reaction caused by one of the products in the cupboard. Which one could it be, I wonder? Well, it's got to be one of these. Ah, I know what to do. Each day, Daguerre put a new exposed photographic plate on the shelf. And he removed one of the bottles. The day you don't get an image, you'll know you've removed the right product. Yes, exactly, Jeannie. This photo came out, and so the chemical is still in the cupboard. I'll remove another one. And the process continued. A new plate on the shelf and another chemical removed. Finally, only one chemical remained. Ah, this is the one. What is it, Mr. Daguerre? It's mercury. Mercury evaporates easily in warm temperatures. The mercury vapor must have developed the photograph. And so a brand new photographic process was discovered, simply because a bottle of mercury was left open in a cupboard. Thanks to this discovery, we no longer have to expose the plate for three hours and keep a model motionless for so long. Thirty minutes are enough now for the mercury vapors to make the image appear. A totally new technique was born. It was called developing. Even when exposed for a moment, the silver compound forms a latent image, but this image is invisible. The developing process makes it visible. With Daguerre's technique, the image is formed on a plate coated with silvered iodine and developed in mercury vapor. To stop the developing process, the photo is placed in a salted solution which fixes the image. Fixing the photo wasn't perfected until later. But we can say that with Daguerre, the photographic process was on its way. Well done, Mr. Daguerre. I have called this new photographic process Daguerreotype. Look, this is the very first camera to bear my name. <laughs> You're famous. 
Here are some examples of daguerreotypes. Look how clear the images are. It's hard to believe they were taken over 140 years ago. In 1839, France bought the daguerreotype patent in order to share it with the world. All of Paris rushed to buy a camera, and before long, people were taking pictures all over the city. Hi, I'm in Japan. Here, the daguerreotype was called silver plate photography. Here's the first photograph ever taken in Japan. It's a portrait of a feudal lord. He's dressed in his traditional costume. Hey, come, come. Step right up and have a silver plate portrait taken of you. No, no, no. Go away. If you take my portrait with that machine, you lock my soul into it. Go away, you hear? Oh, oh. It is hard to believe that people can be as superstitious as that. You may take my photograph if you like. Go on, take it. I'm ready. Go. I hope this photograph isn't for your mother. Would you mind smiling a little? Say, cheese. Cheese. Just what are you trying to pull? The sword is on the wrong side. Everything is in reverse. That was the problem with the daguerreotype. The left and right sides were reversed, exactly as an image in a mirror. Yeah! Like this. Louis Daguerre made a tremendous contribution to photography. But another one of the problems with this process was not being able to make copies. An Englishman named William Fox Talbot found the solution. Hi there. Tell us how you succeeded in finding a way to reproduce photographs. All right. Look at this picture here. It's like Nips's photos. The black and the white are the opposite of what they should be. Everything's in reverse. But I reinversed it, and everything is now as it should be. Huh? I don't understand. Let me explain. What do you think would happen if I took a photograph of this photograph? Ah, yes. The black would become white, and the white black. And we don't need a camera either. We simply place the photo against a sheet of photosensitive paper like this, and then expose it to the light. There. The photo corresponds to reality. As you can see. That's fantastic! And you can make as many copies as you want in that way. Yes, just as easily. The original image with the black and white inverted is called the negative, And the photo taken from it is called the positive. This process invented by Talbot is the same one we use today. He also discovered products which reduced the posing time to one minute. I call the photos made with this method calotypes. It means pretty images. This is Talbot's photography studio. On the left, a document is being copied, and on the right, a portrait's being taken. In 1844, Talbot published his first photo album. Then he improved the fixer, thanks to a process invented by a man named Herschel. The progress made was enormous, and the photos very sharp. But there was still one big problem. They're much too fragile. They crease and tear far too easily. And the paper's texture is still a little blurred. Hmm. We need something more resistant. Glass plates would be ideal, only the silver compound won't stick to it. The use of plates moistened with collodion solved the problem. And so negatives were made on glass plates. The result was as clear as a daguerreotype and could be copied as easily as a calotype. But while all these improvements were going on, another problem arose, a serious one. This is George Eastman, an American. Hello there. You're loaded down. I guess you're going camping, aren't you? No, I need all of this equipment to take pictures. Huh? You mean to say you lug all this around all the time? Yes, unfortunately. You see, I use the collodion plate process, and I must develop my photos immediately before the chemicals dry upon the plate, and so I carry my entire laboratory with me. Ah, oh, it's heavy enough without you. Get off! I'm falling! Oh. 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 Mm. It's about time someone found an easier way to take pictures. And here it is, a camera built in 1898. Eastman placed his film on a spool, and since all you had to do was load it and then simply press a button, anyone could take pictures and get results. Elementary, my dear Eastman. All you've got to do is go click, and you've got a photo. Thomas Edison used Eastman's method of film on spools when he invented the movie camera. 
Movie film with its sprockets led to the idea of small handheld cameras. Just imagine, this photographic film is the same as the film used to make movies. <laughs> Photography continued to progress and was used in many areas. In science and in art, as a witness to history, to capture important events. It's a very precious tool in medicine, too. And for the study of nature. Astronomers make considerable use of photography. Meteorologists, too. They analyze satellite pictures and give important information to aviators as well as to the general public. I'll bet you take pictures, too. They keep nice moments alive. I'd love to see your pictures. Sure thing, Jeannie. I'll show you the pictures I took today as soon as they're developed, okay? That's great. It's a deal. By the way, I talked a lot about chemical products. Remember, they can be dangerous, so don't ever use them without the advice of an adult. Mm-hmm, we, we promise. Well, time for me to go now. So long! Whee! Hey, our photos should be ready by now. Mm-hmm. Why don't we go and pick them up? I'm the greatest photographer I'm in the, the world! I'm the greatest model! They're horrible! Oh, no! It's a complete waste of film! Don't ever ask me to model for you again! You're the world's worst photographer, Alex! Oh...